So it's that time again. Debian is once again debating init systems. They are exploring alternatives to System D. So several developers within Debian and much of the Debian community want an alternative to System D. They want some other alternative to System D because there is a, a small percentage of the Linux population out there, but a very vocal part of the community that is very much anti-System D. They hate System D so much. They are against it as a project, but they're also just against it as far as the philosophy behind System D. And they demand an alternative. So much so that when Debian first switched to System D a few years back, uh, some of the Debian community got together, forked Debian, and created a new distro called Dev1. Dev1 is this, quote, protest distro, as I like to call them. It's a protest distro because it's basically just a forked version of Debian without systemd. They put sys via init back in, and that's your distro. The Arch community also did this. When Arch moved to systemd, some guys forked Arch and created Artix, which runs either OpenRC or run it as the init system, depending on what you want to run. Uh, once again, protest distros. I don't personally recommend you guys run protest distros because I think they're lacking in vision, right? When you go to the web pages of DevOne and to Arctic or to really any protest distro, typically their only reason for you running that distro is, hey, I'm DevOne, why do you need to run me? It's because I'm not Debian. Or, hey, I'm Artix, why do you want to run me? It's because I'm not Arch. I think that a poor vision for a distro to have. I think it's also poor branding. So starting back in November, we got this debate going on on the Debian mailing list and within the Debian community about, hey, we need some alternatives. Let's focus on something that's not system D. Let's, let's offer the community something other than system D as an init system. So they created seven different proposals, I guess. And this will be voted on soon. And what these seven different propositions are is one, focus on system D. That's the very first one. And I, obviously, I think this is the one that's most likely to succeed for Debian is just keep doing what you're doing, right? Focus on system D as your init system. Why worry about alternatives? I certainly don't fault them if that's the way they go, because at the end of the day, it's all free and open source software. We have already got one fork of Debian. I've already talked about DevOne with SysV init still going. You guys don't like SystemD? Okay, there's another Debian out there, DevOne, that's running a different init system. Go run that. Why create so much extra work within the Debian project to support and a NIT system really for a very, very small percentage of the community that wants it for philosophical reasons. The second proposition up is system D will continue to be via NIT system, but let's explore some other alternative init systems. Now we're not gonna officially support those other init systems. If they work, fine. If they don't, that's fine too. But you know, that's we're still officially supporting system D, but you know, we may provide you some some paths to installing some of these other init systems, but you're on your own when you install them. They either work or they don't, but don't come to us for support for the alternative init systems. The third proposition is support for multiple init systems is important, quote, important. Basically, if this were to pass, Debian, all the packages within Debian would be required to be supported for multiple init systems. If a package fails to work with a particular init system, that will be considered a bug and that bug would be considered, quote, important. Proposal number four is to support systemd alternatives, but do not block progress of Debian. Meaning, yeah, we will support you guys that want to run sysv init still or openrc or run it or whatever, but you will not stop the progress of Debian. Well, we will keep releasing on schedule. We will keep doing what we're doing with the system D version. And if your packages are breaking, so be it. But you are not going to hold us back because of what's going on with your alternative init system. So where the previous proposal, you know, those bugs would be filed as bugs and labeled important. Now these bugs 
they're not really considered important or critical in any way for these alternative init systems. Debian just keeps rolling along whether your alternative init system is working or not. Proposal number five is support for systemd alternatives is required. Meaning your packages are not just supposed to work with these alternative init systems, they're required to work. If they don't work, it is a bug, it's a major bug and you have to fix it. And if we have to hold up on development and releases for these bugs, so be it. We're not releasing until everything works with every init system. I uh, think that's a pipe dream. Proposal number six is promoting portability and supporting multiple implementations. What does that mean? I have no idea. That is very vague and it doesn't go into any real details other than, you know what, we support, you know, multiple implementations of init systems. We support portability. Everything should be portable to all these other systems, but there's no real concrete ideas of how to get there or what you need to do. Not, not a real proposal. So that's the sixth proposal, but I, I, I don't take that one serious, to be honest. And proposal number seven, the last one is... We need further discussion on this matter. I think that one certainly has a shot <laughs> at being voted on. Maybe we need further discussion on this matter. But to be honest, in my opinion, because this has been going on for years, we already know what's going on here. We already know all the init systems out there, and we already know what has become the standard init system in Linux, System D. That's why. Almost all of your major Linux distributions now are on System D. Now, because of the beauty of free and open source software, you're free to fork any of those major distributions. Create your own distribution. Rip out System D. Put in your own init system, whatever it is you want to run. You're free to do that, and no one will ever take away that freedom. But these very small protest groups within these distros that want to force the very large community behind Debian to support their alternative init systems seems strange to me. They are not living in reality. Nobody is going to do that kind of work for you, right? If this is something you guys want, if you guys want Debian without system D or Arch without system D or Ubuntu without system D or Fedora without system D, go out there and create it. Don't protest don't you know create a big stink on public mailing list or in forums or or on social media and don't just say hey you guys need to create an option for me to run sysv init or open rc or run it or whatever you know what give these guys a way to you know do the homework yourself you know come with these guys with a plan and saying here's how you do it but I, I don't see anybody protesting that does that. They want somebody else to do all the work for their benefit. That is typically not the way this works in the free and open source community. You got to put in a little bit of time and a little bit of effort yourself. At the end of the day, I think this Debian proposal is not going anywhere of the seven that were proposed. Almost certainly number one is going to pass, which is, hey, let's just keep focusing on system D like we've been doing, because quite frankly, it's, again, just a very, very, very small percentage of the community out there that even cares about the init system. And to be honest, the arguments against System D, most of the arguments against, against System D are not good arguments. One of the best arguments against System D, supposedly, is, well, it doesn't follow the Unix philosophy of do one thing, do one thing well. It's just this big bloated piece of software that tries to do everything. Have you guys heard of the Linux kernel? The Linux kernel is by far the most bloated piece of software <laughs> that we use on a daily basis. Millions and millions and millions of lines of code that really attempts to do everything. I don't see any of you guys complaining about the Linux kernel and it going against the Unix philosophy. So it's hypocritical when you guys complain about system D trying to do too much and you're running Linux. Before I go, I just want to thank all the Patreons that help support my work over on Patreon. Without you guys, this episode wouldn't be possible. You guys, if you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon.